Hello, all my truth seekers. Welcome to The Truth Show Live. I know it's been a while since I've been on a live show, partially due to my schedule and technical difficulties with my computer. Oh, yes. And because they're blocking my views or links permanently, I've had people ask why they can't click or why when they click, the message reads, video cannot be viewed or page cannot be opened. Yes, it's getting that deep. They're blocking my links. However, we're not just talking about that. We'll talk about the latest news as well. Megan and Harry docuseries, part two, featuring Howard Stern. Oh yes. And we're gonna talk about Jennifer Lopez, hidden personality. Oh yes, the girl got some skeletons in her closet. I'm not going to be taking Q&A at all because this is pre-recorded, so we're just going to skip this one for now. Before we get started, you know we have to play the trigger warning. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. And of course, we have to play this as well, you know, the trigger warning and the alleged warning. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. All right, fantastic. Now that we get that out of the way, now, we all have seen the documentary about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, part one and two. If you haven't, please go see it. It's on Netflix. It's beautiful. It gets in depth and it reveals a lot and things start to make sense after a while. You may cry, laugh the whole nine yards. In part two, we learned that the royal family was using Meghan Markle as a scapegoat to simmer or redirect rumors about elite members of the royal family. They develop a hate campaign against Megan. Oh, yes. There were channels, Twitter accounts, pent against Megan, and they were from only over a dozen accounts, which had a huge impact, if you didn't know. I mean, it was crazy. Reading a comment section and some of the posts, it just breaks my heart because they, they are very grotesque. They're heart, heartless, they're cruel, and just, it, it just takes a break, breath away because the hate against a person whom they don't even know, it's appalling. It's, it's inhuman, you know what I mean? So that's what this whole documentary is about. So please go watch it if you haven't go watched it. And then we have Howard Stern, who called them whiners and said they were whining B-I-T-C-H's. And then he compared them to the Kardashians. The Kardashians. I'm paraphrasing, of course. I mean, by telling them that if the Kardashians could take it, they could. Okay, I just have to say this. These are two different situations and media lynching. One is based on racism and diversion i.e. Meghan and Harry, the other, i.e. Kardashians, could straddle the fence by gaslighting black culture and making billions while being another race. Two different situations, two different advances. Just want to point that out. Oh, and let's not forget how Stern has gotten into feuds with so many people, predominantly women, outspoken women, he has literally built his entire career on being cruel to people. Oh, yes. It was even warmer that he wore blackface. Yes, and made many racial slurs. He's more a convenient racist, or maybe he's a flower snake. All I know is that if he were a black man, he would have been off the air 
years ago. Let's be realistic here, people. You see, this is a racial war. And it brought up many issues and things within the royal family that hadn't been discussed or just simply swept under the rug, such as their history with racism and slavery and how they gained their fortune. You heard me talk about this several times on here. But just in case many of you didn't get the notifications because you know what's going on, on my channel, here is a brief recap. So people are angry that individuals who dealt with genocide because of British colonial rule are not celebrating their life the way they want them to. Yet again, people gladly condemned Fidel Castro. And so this goes to what I always talk about. The person that controls the narrative controls uh, how we think and feel. And frankly, the view in this country is don't say anything bad about Queen Elizabeth II because she was a great, wonderful, happy person and ignore colonial rule and its impact on indigenous people. Well, you know, Roland, um, this is one of the reasons why the Black Star Media Network is so important. And last night I did a three hour broadcast dealing with um, Queen Elizabeth II, British colonial, British colonialism and slavery, because I watched a lot of the coverage all day long on MSNBC. That's basically what I had it on all day watching MSNBC. And they didn't deal with any of that history. OK, the, the opulence when they showed all the footage and going back decades and they showed the 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 the, the gold carriage, the gold carriage drawn by 30 horses. And they show all the people in, in, in their regalia and things like this. They don't talk about the British colonialism that exploited people, tortured people, enslaved people to create the billions of dollars. So you see that opulence displayed, you know, so, when, you know, now, the, now within the last maybe three hours, New York Times just published an article in Africa. The Queen's death renews a debate about the legacy of the British Empire, and it deals with Kenya and the Mau Mau Rebellion. OK, when you go, uh, I, I did a lot of research yesterday on Queen Elizabeth, but also on Great Britain. When you look at how many African countries they got from the Berlin Conference of 1884, okay, and you look, they got the Gambia, Nigeria, where that sister's from, okay, they got Ghana, Sierra Leone, they got uh, Kenya, Tanzania, uh, Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, okay. When, so when you go talk to those African people, who had relatives who were killed by the British Empire. They have no love for her. They have no love for King Charles III. But May, May 19th, 2022, when Meghan Markle married uh, Prince Harry, I did a two hour broadcast and I said, black people watched the royal wedding and got teary eyed, but you forgot about the transatlantic slave trade. Because I said she married into, this is no disrespect to Meghan Markle, I said she married into a family of colonizers. They're not colonizers because they're white. They're colonizers because Britain colonized one-fifth of the world population a hundred years ago. One-fifth of the world population was un under British rule. And they didn't rule with kindness. They didn't rule with a smile. They ruled with brutality. So I wish, I don't wish anything ill on Queen Elizabeth II, I sure as hell don't miss her. And I hope some more join her. Seriously, go study the history of the British Royal Empire and how they got what they got. These are some demons. These are colonizers. That's I understand. I may have expressed it differently than Uja Anya, but I totally understand what she's saying. Because those were those, those were her relatives who were massacred by these, by these white, by these white supremacists, by these colonizers, who then want to put a, a, a handshake and a smile. They won't even have a conversation about reparations with Jamaica. Jamaica's about to sue them for reparations. They won't even have a conversation about reparations. So I have no love lost for them. Here are some, uh, Eton Thomas, um, former NBA player, um, uh, Kelly, he posted a couple of videos on his Twitter feed. I thought, might as well play both of them. just want to get folks a thought, a look at this. So um, uh, check this out. 
2022, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II became the first British monarch to celebrate a platinum jubilee. The celebration took place over a four-day bank holiday, millions of Brits parted in street parties and people around the world joined in line celebrations. But is celebrating the British monarch harmless fun, or does it normalise the monarchy's long history of colonialism? And is it a celebration of British imperialism? Here are four ways in which the British royal family has benefited from colonialism. They have historically benefited from the enslavement of human beings. In 1562, John Hawkins was the first Englishman to include African people in his cargo. He traded these people for ginger and sugar. On his next voyage in 1564, Queen Elizabeth I founded a vessel for his journey. The British East India Company was formed in 1600 to exploit trade with Southeast Asia. They did that by colonizing land and exploiting people through the transatlantic slave trade. The figure who signed the Royal Charter allowing this all to happen was also Elizabeth I. Between 1690 and 1807, an estimated 6 million Africans were transported from Africa to the Americas on British or Anglo-American ships. The royal family and the British Parliament protected the trade. After Elizabeth I's death, the Royal African Company was established in 1660 by the Duke of York. The company transported more than 187,000 slaves who were often branded DY for the Duke of York. It's difficult to say how much the royals benefited from slavery, but many say it funded the entire British treasury. And it's safe to say that much of the monarch's significance, power, and wealth stems from the enslavement of Africans. Lucy Worsley, the chief curator of royal historic palaces, says that all royal palaces from the 17th century have an element of money which is derived from slavery, including Kensington Palace and Hampton Court. The royal family was built on a legacy of stolen land, goods, and atrocities. Queen Elizabeth II's largest diamond, the Kohinoor, was stolen from a 10-year-old prince in India along with his land in the 19th century. It was transferred to Queen Mary in 1911 and was handed down to the current queen. Both India and Pakistan have asked for the diamond's return, but it's still very much owned by the crown. In India, between the 1700s and mid-20th century, an estimated $45 trillion was stolen by the British under the vestiges of the crown. Famines, which occurred as a result of Britain's non-intervention policy, led to the death of more than 30 million Indians. In 1947... Now, that was, uh, that was, that was sort of like part one, and that was also a uh, part two. He wanted to get Britain out of India quickly. The decision to carve up a country led to 15 million people being displaced and between 1 and 2 million people dying. Of course, this is just India. At its peak, Britain had colonized 25% of the world's surface. From the Mau Mau Massacre in Kenya to concentration camps in South Africa, Britain, under the vestiges of the crown, has a long and bloody history of colonial atrocities, and the royals have historically been at the centre of them. The prestige of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is an organisation of 52 independent member states. What it actually is is a collection of former British colonies and Rwanda and Mozambique. The Commonwealth originated after World War II, when much of India and Africa was becoming independent. The Commonwealth claims that it is an association of sovereign nations working towards shared goals of prosperity, democracy and peace. Critics say that the association promotes neocolonialism through free trade agreements, which favour more developed economies. British companies own more than $1 trillion of Africa's key resources. The Queen is the head of the Commonwealth, and Charles has been appointed her successor, which allows the British monarchy to remain in a position of international privilege and go on tours of Commonwealth countries. Can you believe the nerve of these Republicans? They only want to block progress for our union. They talk about cutting Medicare and Social Security. They played politics with veterans' health care. They voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and funding for our HBCUs and against lowering prescription drug costs for our seniors. These Republicans keep trying hard to stand in the way, but President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Democrats won't let them. They are delivering for us. The Democratic National Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our... <clears throat> okay, let's move on. I hope you guys learned something from that. That was very deep. I wanted to show you something a little bit differently than I normally show you in my um, royal family clips and things. I know that my channel is not on the algorithm and it may not show up in your feed because what I'm talking about so you're just going to have to share, 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 personally share. And if the links don't work, just keep trying the links because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And my old videos that I made years ago, um, those links are seriously sporadic. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. This, uh, this thing, whole thing kind of started when I did when I was on that whole Illuminati, Beyonce thing. 
it kind of started then and then it stopped previously not too long ago and then it started again so I don't know who's doing this but no one's you know we get into all that later I just want to stay on point but I'm just giving you a brief summary of the kind of things that I'm dealing with right now okay as you know so I'm sure now you know the root of this whole slavery thing with the royal family and how far and deep it goes and how they parade around as if this is a colonialism or an institution that was built on hard work and great investments and things of that nature. No, that's not how they got their riches, okay? We can honestly say there are certain billionaires who actually did get their riches from probably thieving and stealing and dealing and stuff like that, but it had nothing to do with slavery, you know? There are certain trillionaires and billionaires or whoever you want to call it got their wealth not on the slaves' backs and bloods lost by our ancestors. But the royal family is not one of them. Every dime they receive and continuously receive is from the blood of slaves in the past. The diamonds you see is from the blood of slaves and things they stolen during their excavation in Egypt and all over Africa. They literally own 90% of African lands. Well, not 90%, it's dwindling down to about 70% because a lot of Africa and other places around the world are taking back their independence. So it's slowly dwindling down. But we have Prince Charles, that's the king now, and he's been known to rule kind of like Hitler. So we got to hope that he has change, but who knows? I mean, judging from how Prince William been acting lately, we don't know if any of them have changed, but we'll find out. And karma is something, but I'm jumping ahead here. Okay, so getting back to Meghan Markle and Harry's docuseries, we learned that the words prevented Meghan from inviting too many of her family members to their wedding. Reason being because of class people. Yes, the class of people. Or them not wanting to be, you know, around many regular people. Fear of something being leaked. I mean, I could understand the reception, but the ceremony, come on now, please. Then again, I know the family, you know, I'm just going to move on from here because I have like a agreement and a disagreement with that whole subject of having your family members there. You know what I mean? Certain family members you really cannot trust. And I'm just being real here. So I'm just going to bypass that for now. Okay. <clears throat> but part two did explain in detail how the royal family socially lynched Megan for trying to push the royal family to the 21st century and how William is so far deep <laughs> that he's turned into a clone between Charles and the late Elizabeth. I still have hope for him. You know, I'm hoping that he, he just, we don't know how he feel. We just believe what the media says and he's not really that kind of person. I'm still trying to hold, hold out for hope, but we, we'll find out later, I guess. I don't know if we find out at all, but I know how the Royals think. I have studied them for years and they're not looking at that documentary as something that needs to change, you know, thinking, okay, we need to change this. Are we going to repeat the same mistake, or are we going to try to do something about it so this mistake would not be repeated? What are we going to do about this? You would think they would come in with that rationalization, but the worst family, they are not known for that rationalization. So that's really crazy. But anyway, as I was saying, they're not looking at this as something that needs to be changed. They're looking at this like we need to destroy them. I guess they haven't learned from their past. They want Megan dead. And the media, the sheep, and the cruel comments in the comment section are heartbreaking. I mean, I cannot express that enough. It is very heartbreaking reading those comments. And then you have the post from Entertainment. I believe people or both who post specific phrases, but not the entirety of what Harry said about the fight with his brother and father. He said he understood 
where they were coming from, paraphrasing, but that's generally what he said, but they didn't understand his position. Megan was getting threatened, and so were their kids. The royal family was being their usual racist, cruel self. Well, you know what, like I said before, Carmen's a bitch. It was also confirmed, and I did a video about Samantha Margaret. It turns out I was so right, but I didn't know it was this deep. It was also confirmed that Samantha Marco is just merely a ranting from a bitter, rejected mother whose daughter chose Megan over her. As a mother, I know that would hurt, but it's not Megan's fault. So stop pointing the blame. I mean, I would sue Samantha, but she's probably not going to sue because she's friends with her daughter. And she don't want to do that to her friend, or her niece, I meant to say. So you don't want to do that to her niece and her family. Even though, I mean, I know they say blood is thicker than water, but you need water to live, okay? Sometimes you have to treat blood like your enemy, because sometimes blood can be worse than people who are not your blood. And that is just some real talk right there, okay? Now, however, I'm just going to end it here about this subject. I wish Megan and Harry luck. They seem very happy and in love. I pray the media leaves them alone and the royal family reaps what they sow because this is getting way out of control. I mean, the world reap what they sow in terms of what they did to Blacks, Africans, Hispanics, Indians, and even Asians. You know, enough is enough. Now let's move on to the next subject. Now. I know mo most of you don't really care about this, but I just want to talk about something a little calmer and then we'll start talking about something really deep, okay? And personal with me. Jennifer Lopez hidden diva personality. Yes, she has one. She does, for real. Now, it's been leaked, and I've been saying this for years, that Jennifer is not this friendly type and, and is not a giving person, despite how much money she has. I mean, I can understand her not wanting to flood her money. I, I completely understand that. But tipping servers, waitresses, whoever, $5, and when anyone whom she's having dinner with or lunch with or whatever the case may be, tips a lot of money because they have it like that and it's nothing wrong for giving it to waitresses who literally work for the tips. I know, I used to be a waitress, I used to be a server. I, it's really hard work. You do a lot and you lucky get $2 from these people. I mean, it's really crazy. And they don't get paid a lot of money an hour either. I mean, it's really slave work, to be honest. But anyway, but they do all this for practically nothing. Yes. And Jennifer, and this is really sad. <laughs> this is really sad. It was told that while eating out with Mark Anthony, Jennifer had chased down the massive tip he left and replaced it with a $5 bill. You see, this is why you didn't see many of her exes go out to eat with her too much. It was leaked that she did this with Ben as well, as you saw in the previous slide there. Let me go back for you guys. See in this slide here? Yeah, she did this with Ben Affleck. So trust me, Ben Affleck is not going to go out to eat with her too much because he likes to leave big tips, even though I heard some dark, shady stuff about him as well. But come on now, he's not that kind of guy. So you probably won't see him, and both of them should I say, go out to eat too much. Not because she's a celebrity and it's paparazzi. That's not the case. He just don't want to be embarrassed like that. And I don't blame him. My husband is a really cheap t tipper too, and I hate going out to eat with him among other reasons. And I don't like that. You know, I just don't like that. These people are dealing with our food. And I don't know. I'm like Wendy Williams. I don't know what they do with my food back there. And I don't want to be on their bad side either. Okay. <laughs> I'm just being real. So, yeah. That's how Jennifer Lopez is. And she don't give to charity as much either. You know how um these crazy astronomical and just uneventful natural disasters happen. And celebrities give money mainly predominantly the black celebrities. A lot of white celebrities don't really get money unless they're people in trouble. But black celebrities, they get money in millions and they start these little causes and things of that nature. You know what? Do you really see Jennifer up there? Think about that. The last time I think I saw her, I'm not saying she don't give, but she don't give graciously and she don't give often. The last time I think she gave, she donated some of her old clothes that she no longer wore, wore anymore. And she had them auctioned off. 
I think that's what she ain't giving no money out of her pocket. She just, you know, gave them the proceeds from her old clothes. And I was thinking, okay. And I thought that was weird, you know, and I never really saw headlights. Oh, Jennifer gave one million dollars. Oh, Jennifer gave two million dollars. She just don't do stuff like that. You know, she just don't. You can say it's well hidden or come on now. Why would it be well hidden? She just don't do stuff like that. I don't know what's her freaking problem, but I'm starting to see an inner, inner side of her. And I see why she go through so many exes. You know, I see why a lot of them don't miss her either and don't want her back. <laughs> You'll never hear him say, I want her back. They'd be more on the lines of good ratings. I'm glad she gone. And I'm starting to see why. You know, even A-Rod. He was cheating. He couldn't wait to get away from her. And I thought that was strange. But now I see why. You know what I mean? Because if she taking back tips and treating servers like slaves. Honey, your ancestors were slaves too. I mean, it's sad. It's sad to even see her act like that. But you know what? Maybe the money has gone to her head. Or maybe she feels she worked too hard and she don't want to give too much. I don't know her reasons is, but she needs to get her freaking reality check, seriously. But let me keep keep going here. I'm pondering off in that. But that part really upset me. That really touched home for her to be that way. And too many people have said this, and this is not a lie. I'm going to say alleged, but it's not really alleged. <laughs> okay. So, and I'm not really done yet. I'm not really done yet. Okay. I'm not really done. It goes deeper. Her biasness, her shadiness, her bitchiness, and I normally don't like calling females bees because I know the root of the word of that. And so um, it goes deep. And her riff with maybe alleged Beyonce. But, you know, who knows? There's many Virgos out there, so who knows? So it has been said. And we all know Beyonce is very talented, very talented, very beautiful girl. I'm a fan, to be honest. Well, she leave Jay-Z alone, but I'm a fan. However, she is known to steal from everyone, especially Jennifer Lopez. Well, guess what? The anger goes deep, y'all. It goes deep. And I didn't even know how deep it went. Yeah. Well, one person who reportedly isn't a fan of those born between August 23rd and September 22nd is Jennifer Lopez, who cut potential dancers from her tour audition Yes, she cut potential dancers from her tour audition process based on their sign. Yeah, according to Glee star Heather Morris. And she said this, and I quote, Jennifer Lopez held an audition for dancers for one of her tours. Morris said on the Just Saying with Justin Martindale podcast some week, she walks in the room and she said, Thank you so much, you guys have worked so hard. By a show of hands, if there are any Virgos in the room, can you just raise your hand? Morris, some of this is a female, was an Aquarius. So, and wasn't really there for that particular audition, but heard the funny story from others. Anyway, she looked at them and she said, thank you so much for coming. And they had to leave after a full day of auditioning. For Jennifer Lopez, she added, most of the time at the dance audition, you're not getting paid. You've been there since 10 a.m. and you're auditioning until like 6 p.m. sometime and you're not getting paid. But hey, you got to hustle, right? When Martindale asked if the former dancer's stories was true, she noted, this is hearsay, but true. Adding, when one person says something could be true, but when multiple people say something, it's like, oh, that happened. Oh, yes. Morris did admit that she might have botched the story, that it could have been a different sign. However, she said Virgos like things planned and neat, which is true. Virgos are very detail-oriented people. Jennifer is a Leo, okay, who lives for a little bit of chaos in her life. Oh, yes. However, mm -hmm. however, Billboard tried to reach out to Lopez's rep for confirmation. While there is no official proof that the story is accurate, it is worth noting for fun that her ex-husband Mark Anthony is a Virgo and her new husband Ben Affleck is a Leo like her. I mean, so it is clear that, you know, it's not him. But I doubt she would do this to Mark Anthony. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean... Why would dancers have anything to do with Mark Anthony? I don't think it had anything to do with Mark Anthony, but we know who 
she was hating. She been hating on Beyonce. They've been having this uh, untold, unspoken, unverified feud between them for a while. I mean, they cords on the red carpet, you know, get some hoo 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 and smiles and stuff. But I, I don't think they care for each other very much. I'm just being real. Anyway, let's move on. I want to get personal with you guys. In this particular segment, I'm letting you in what I'm dealing with when it comes to YouTube. And trust me, it gets very dark. Okay, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to get personal with you because I am the truth show and I don't lie. Unless it's compromising my safety. I must protect my family. However, this journey with YouTube seems to be coming to a halt. No, I'm not shutting down my page, but I am going to prove to you that I am literally making these videos for free. And my reason for not giving up is for you. I want you to know everything I know and learn. It's not about money. It's about the truth. With that said, here is an inside look at my YouTube pages. I'm officially turning off the money option because it's useless. They're manipulating my numbers and taking all my money. And no one wants to help me, so why monetize my videos when I'm not getting nothing from them anyway? You know, and YouTube has it, whether if your videos or your channel is monetized or not, they're still going to play ads on your channel because they got it like that. So it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? As you can see here, my Truth Show channel got shut down. And I'm not sure why, because I wasn't violating anything. I wasn't talking about anything different from anyone else. But, you know, they wanted that. They've been trying to get the True Chill page for a while. There was, and every time I go up the next day, all those subscribers that was plus get deleted. So I don't know what the hell is going on with my pages, but I'm just going to shut up my money ties thing. And all my videos are backed up anyway. So just in case I might just shut down my entire channel. I don't want to do that because I feel that by me doing that, it's allowing any hacker or haters or celebrities who have cyber um, specialists on my channel trying to make sure I don't get too broad in or just making sure my views don't look as bright or I don't know what the hell they're doing. I don't want them to win and I want karma to proceed with full throttle threefold and their true colors be shown because it's it's not fair for them to be like be like that when I'm just merely telling the truth. If you don't like what I say then don't listen. You know? But anyway I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. 